Okay, let's do some examples. Here are four functions, and these functions that were given over here, f, g, h, and k, are derivatives. See, that's f primed. And in each case, we're going to find the function. So here we have f primed of x is 4x to the fourth. We want to find function f, the function that has this as its derivative. Well, this is x to the fourth, so the function that has that as its derivative is going to be x to the fifth. But if we differentiate x to the fifth, we don't get this. We get 5x to the fourth. So in order to end up with 4x to the 4th, I need to put a 4 fifths here. And now you can see that if I differentiate this, I would have 5 times 4 fifths x to the 4th, and the 5s would cancel, and I would be left with that. So this is my antiderivative. But then we need to add the constant of integration, because any function of this nature, 4 fifths x to the 5th, shifted up or down any amount would have that as its derivative. So 4 fifth x to the 4 fifths x to the fifth plus c is the antiderivative. Okay, let's do another. g primed is 7x to the negative 2. So what would function g be? What function would have that 7x to the negative 2 as its derivative? Well, it's probably going to be a x to the negative 1 just as differentiating, if you're differentiating a polynomial or a simple power function, taking the derivative reduces the power by 1. Taking the antiderivative or integrating increases the power by 1. So we go from negative 2 to negative 1. That's an increase of 1 in the power. And then we need to account for that 7. So let's put a 7 here. Now let's check this. Does differentiating this give us that? Well, derivative here, we would have the 7. And then the derivative of x to the negative 1 would be negative 1 x to the negative 2. So that would introduce a negative sign. So that out, we need to put in a negative sign here. I'm going to move this over just to make a little bit of room for the negative sign there. Negative 7 x to the negative 1. And then you can check this. If you take the derivative of that, you do, in fact, get 7 x to the negative 2. Okay, a similar thought process will get us h primed. 3x plus 2 to the fifth, the derivative is going to be something like 3x plus 2 to the sixth. Okay, now let's take the derivative of this and see if we get that. Okay, the derivative of this, I'm going to come down here and scribble, would be 6 times 3x plus 2 to the fifth times 3. Remember the chain rule the derivative of the inner function. So this is 18 3x plus 2 to the fifth. So taking the derivative of this doesn't quite give us this. When we take the derivative of this, we have this extra factor of 18 showing up. So to make that not show up, we need to have a 1 18th right there. Now if we take the derivative of this, we'll have this divided by 18. That will be h primed. So this is our answer. Oh, and we need the plus c also. And up here on g also, we need the plus c on both of those. Okay, one more. k primed is cosine of 3x. Okay, what function has cosine as its derivative? Well, the sine function does. So this is going to be the sine of 3x. And let's check, does taking the derivative of this give us that? Well, let's close. The derivative of sine 3x would be cosine 3x times 3 because of the chain rule, the derivative of my inner function. So to get rid of that factor of 3, I need a 1 third right here. And then the derivative of this would be 1 third times cosine x times 3, which would be that and we need the plus c. Okay, another example. f primed is 4x squared. Find the general equation for f. So we want to find the function whose derivative is that, is 4x squared. Okay, so f of x is going to be, well, there's going to be the 4 
and we'll, we'll need a x cubed and if I take the derivative of that I get 12 x squared not 4x squared. So I need to, to make it come out to a 4, I need to divide by 3. So 4x cubed over 3. Then you can check. If you take the derivative of that, you get 4 thirds times 3x squared, which is that. So this is 4 thirds x cubed plus c. So that's the general equation for f. Okay, f of x is 4, 4x four cubed over 3 plus c. Now that c can be anything. Doesn't matter what it is. If I take the derivative of that, the derivative of the constant term will be 0, and I'll get that. So there's really an infinite number, an infinite possible number of functions for f, and this, uh, this is all of them. Now we're told to find the particular equation for f of x if f of 0 equals 2. This one fact can allow us, will, will help us to go from an infinite number of possibilities here down to a single possibility. In other words, with, with that piece of information, we can find a value for c. Okay, we're told that f of 0 is 2. So uh, let me elaborate just a little bit more. This is a cubic curve, so it looks something like that, but it could be shifted up or down any amount. Okay, so there's a, an infinite number of possible cubic curves, all alike, just shifted up or down, and all of them have as their derivative that function. 